Now, the country's debt has gone up by 13 billion cities to hit 304.6 billion cities in March this year. Now, according to data from the Bank of Ghana, this is equivalent to 70.2% of gross domestic product, lower than the 76.1% of GDP registered in December 2020. Now, the domestic debt went up by 163.6 billion cities at the end of the first quarter of this year, but the external debt uh, remained the same. We are joined via Zoom by former finance minister, Sir Tekpe. It's great to have you, sir, on the program uh, this afternoon. So we worked the math, and uh, so it, the outcome was that each Ghanaian would be required to pay um, about 10,000, uh, is it 10,100 CDs? Um, and so I just want to say, if you have that much on you and you can afford to pay for me as well, I, I'll be so grateful. <laughs> I'll be so grateful. But hey, uh, while we had it, Ghana's debt, 304 billion cities, uh, based on data from March, where are we headed to? Well, yes, thank you very much. And, um, you know, I'm glad you mentioned where we are headed. If you look at the Bank of Ghana, you know, statements critically, and they publish some other information. Um, what is driving the debt? We all know it's revenue minus expenditure. You have a deficit. Mm. And if the deficit is increasing, or it's not declining, then it means that you are going to borrow. And if you borrow more than you repay, then your debt is going to move on the same trajectory. Uh, it's not going to, to slow. So what is, the, what is Bank of Ghana telling us? The deficit on a cash basis, it doesn't include arrears. You know, it's about 2.6% you know, percent. Uh, revenue is still stagnant because revenue, there's a shot for 3.6 against the 3.7, you know, for the quarter. I'm talking about the first quarter. Meanwhile, expenditure is about 5.6 against 6.1. Uh, and so if you add the arrears uh, and others, you will see that our revenue performance is still just about half of what, you know, we have been uh, the expenditure. And that means that the borrowing trend would continue. And therefore, um, where are we headed? It looks like there is no immediate respect, you know, with revenue stagnant and, and the targets not being met. Um, we don't have the full details, so I'm being cautious here, but I'm reading from the tables. Uh, the, it's the tables on the Ministry of Finance website have been off for some time now, so it's difficult to do analysis. But let me just focus on this. So it means that we are going to continue borrowing. What are other pressures that are? One, we all know that wages and interest rates are taking all our tax revenue and it is not enough. Mm -hmm. We are still talking about negotiation, you know, of uh, public sector, you know, salaries. Any adjustments, however minimal, you know, would worsen that situation. We also know, and I just I listened to the discussion on interest rate. Yes, the policy rate may be going down. But as you borrow, as the government is a borrow, there is complaint already, you know, including your media by experts who appear on, about crowding. And therefore, it means that if government and most of the, the financing uh, before, uh, for the first quarter was domestic. Of course, the sovereign bond revenues came in. Uh, but the government is, for, to the extent that there are no plans to borrow externally now, uh, government is going to depend on domestic. We all know that there has been periods mm. in which government could not meet its auction targets. And that means that the borrowing is, is tight. And therefore, Bank of Ghana may be sending the right signal, but I'm afraid the fiscal is not sending the right signal um, because the borrowing is going to continue. And that is what matters. Why do I say that? That doesn't matter because it is after government has borrowed that there will be credit you know, to the private sector. And that is what is called, you know, crowding. So it means that the pressure on real interest rates, you know, uh, by the banks, you know, may, may not abate substantially, you know, okay. um, for as long as, you know, we have a widening deficit. So, uh, and so if you look at this, uh, finally, there is, let me just add another one. There's been talk about arrears, far mm -hmm. in essence of the three billion, uh, which has been, you know, estimated for the year. I have heard one arrears figure alone already being about 3.6, I believe in the road sector or something to that effect. So that means that, you know, we do not know the full picture of arrears. For example, we all know we've been debating free SHS. Uh, nobody has known the arrears, you know, the commitments that has to be made to free SHS. 
We all know about the energy sector arrears, mm -hmm. which is also very huge. And therefore, it means that these are also fine assets. And these are the pressures, you know, that is facing government and the impact on borrowing. So I'm afraid I don't see an abatement yet. Yeah, and I, I want you to talk to me about the debt overhang and crowding and what the effect on the economy is. Juxtaposing that to uh, recent reports, I think we reported this morning, about, or was it yesterday in the morning, about the economy picking up uh, post-COVID-19. So we have a debt situation. We are trying to fix the economy. The, it appears good. Uh, I mean, what, what is the effect on the economy with our debt situation? Well, that is positive. I mean, that is tr truly positive. Mm. Uh, why? Because uh, there will be some boost to oil revenue. So now the prices are also going up. And if our output, you know, remains, you know, stable at close to 200,000 barrels per day, it means that GRM might see a boost in, you know, in some, in some revenue. All and right. that would ease the pressure on the deficit. The deficit, you know, which, which is a problem. You know that the deficit, in fact, the IMF adjusted the um, adjusted the the debt, but it is the, the fiscal. So long as mm -hmm. it was energy, it meant that you also have to adjust, you know, the deficit. And so the deficit at the end of last year was about 15 percent. You know, so anything that improves revenue, you know, helps. What is not happening is that we are not seeing an abatement or a lowering of expenditure, and therefore it means deficit will move on a much money. But let me also say that as we see oil revenue. Uh, going inching up and stability in produ production, it is time for us to be preparing for the next crisis. It is time for us to think about restoring the stabilization fund cap, you know, so that we can have money channeled and, and built up in the stabilization fund so that hopefully with two oil fields, or sorry, three oil fields, we will be able to take about 500 you know, million US dollars, not 250, which was accumulated in the past, you know, to face the next crisis because you cannot manage an economy no matter how tough the situation or how well for four years without facing those crises. So I think the PRMA, you know, parliament should look, you know, critically and begin to restore because it's only when it's restore or channel part of the financing, you know, that is going to come from the oil revenue into paying down debt, you know, via the sinking fund and other build, boost up the infrastructure fund so that we can improve capital expenditure. Otherwise, you know, we are not we are not putting much into the real sector of the economy. Uh, and so with these caveats, I would say that that observation is a positive one. OK, because my final question to you was going to be um, how we, we can address it, the debt situation, because uh, when it comes to borrowing, it doesn't look like we are going to stop borrowing anytime soon. Uh, we, we are trying to raise more revenue with new uh, tax measures. I don't know to how far reaching that would be. You have made some suggestions yourself. Um, if you take a look at what government or how government is approaching this matter, are you confident that uh, we're in the right place? You see, when you talk about lowering the debt, you have to go to the same variables, unfortunately. One, you have to increase revenue, right? Yeah. Uh, and the revenue that is going to come is sustainable. It's not coming from within re GRA restructuring, GRA, you know, because otherwise it wouldn't be stagnant. So what is going to come is, let's say it's a bonanza from, you know, external, it was a external that caused the crisis, external is coming to, but we need some reforms on revenue generation. Uh, then you have to tackle expenditure mm. because it is the two, the combination of the two that gives you your deficit. So if expenditure is not going down, and we, we continue as a nation to, to spend as though we were in normal times or under the same scenario, I'm afraid the deficit will not go down. And therefore, as long as your deficit doesn't go down, it means that you're going to borrow. It's not yeah. going to abate. And if you borrow, and you are, you are, if you are channeling much of the revenue that is coming because it's, it's not much you know, into expenditure, then it means that you are also not putting money aside for building capital for the capital budget, and also you are not putting money aside to reduce the, you know, the, the debt, you know. And so all these variables have to come in and play. And then when something external happens, it becomes a boost. And then you can use that to address stabilization, you know, of the economy. So we need a total program. And it's not enough to be picking on stages one, like a national identification number or whatever. It must be total. It must be complete in the sense of GRA being moved to the revenue modernization phase. So a lot is being done, you know, by GRA and the government. I must, you know, uh, but I'm saying it is not comprehensive. We don't have a total 
package uh, as we do have in say the home growth situation or as as we did have if we had IMF programs and the rest. We don't have that yet. All right. And, uh, All right. and we are moving towards the second half of the year, you know, and it's, it's running late at least, you know, for 2021. Or better still, Mr. Tekpe, we individually pay our 10,000 CDs and then uh, we see what the Lord will do. <laughs> but that was supposed to be a joke. <laughs> hey, remember right. that a lot of people are coming out of crisis. <laughs> a lot of people, when they come picking, they are now going to end the 10,000. So they don't have it, you know, to, yeah. <laughs> to, yeah. Great. Uh, to contribute immediately. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much for your time. That's the Marketplace. Thanks for watching, everyone. My name is Dao Kwao.